can better understand precipitation reactions by looking at the reaction quotient. So remember, the reaction quotient, Q, is calculated the same way that the equilibrium constant is calculated. The difference is that Q is not necessarily calculated at equilibrium. Comparing Q to KSP will tell us which direction that equilibrium is going to move. So KSP is the value of um, What does that mean? The value of the product. The product of the, I don't know. Anyway, KSP <laughs> is at equilibrium only. Q is under any conditions. So Q is equal to CA2 plus and F minus squared. So if Q is less than K, that means the reaction is going to move to increase Q until it is the same size as K. Because that's what's going to happen. The reaction will react until Q equals K. So what's going to make Q larger? Increasing these concentrations or decreasing it? Q is equal to the product of these. Increasing. So if these numbers get larger, Q gets larger. So if Q is less than KSP, that means the solution is unsaturated, more solid, can dissolve. The reaction will proceed in the forward direction. If Q is equal to KP, we are at equilibrium. No more dissolving can happen, and so this is called a saturated solution. If Q is greater than KSP, the solution is called supersaturated. We've got more dissolved in the solution than can possibly be dissolved, which sounds impossible, doesn't it? Well, it's definitely going to be unstable. And so generally, um, the solid will precipitate out of solution. So we can use Q to predict whether a precipitation will react. A precip mm. We can use Q to predict whether precipitation will occur when two solutions are mixed. So we need to identify what the potential precipitate is and then calculate Q and compare it to KSP. A solution containing lead 2 nitrate is mixed with one containing sodium bromide to form a solution that is 0 0.0600 molar in lead nitrate and 0 0.0158 molar in sodium bromide, does a precipitate form in the newly mixed solution? And then we're given a KSP for the lead to bromide. So this, this is our big hint that that's what we're looking for. Um, but would sodium and nitrate precipitate? No. Sodium compounds are very soluble. Nitrate compounds, very soluble. This is, this is going to be no precipitate from those. So it's got to be the other ones. So we're looking at uh, the BR, sorry, PBBR2. And we're always going to write this for dissolving. So this is going to be lead. 2 plus and 2 bromide. And so we know that KSP is equal to 4.67 times 10 to the minus 6, um, which would be the iron constant, the lead concentration. Uh, times the bromide concentration squared. So we're going to do a nice table. What we're looking at here is when this solution is first created. 
it says in the newly mixed solution. So these are the concentrations when it's first mixed. So the concentration of lead is going to be, keep putting that over too far. Get over there. Uh, 0 0.0600 molar. And the concentration of bromide, bromide is 0 0.0158. Should I multiply that by two? No. No, no because th what we've got here isn't coming from this. It's coming from this, sodium bromide. There's one mole of bromide for every one mole of this, and this is the concentration. So that's just what it is. Now we look at how things are going to change. Um, actually, no, we're not going to do that. We're just going to calculate Q. Got ahead of myself. So here is our lead concentration. Uh, wait a minute. So we've got lead, oh my goodness, and we've got bromide squared. So then we want to compare this to the KSP. Is Q bigger than KSP? Yes, it is. So we can predict that a precipitate will form after these solutions are mixed. Any questions? We did not need the ice table there. Got a little too excited. Yes. Um, yes, there could be problems that use an ice table. Because we could ask, well, how much lead is left? How much, you know, what's the concentration of lead and what's the concentration of bromide in this solution? Which I think is where my brain was going. Not sure. Never tells me. Selective precipitation. So this is um, a process in which we're going to add something to precipitate one of the cations without precipitating the others. So we just want to get rid of one of them. So we choose a reagent based on KSP values. So we want something that's going to precipitate one of the ions and not the others. So we want a difference in KSP values to be um, at least a factor of a thousand. And then we can calculate the concentration needed to start the precipitation by comparing Q and KSP. So if we get the concentration above the equilibrium concentration, then precipitation will begin. So a solution contains equal concentrations of barium, lead to, and calcium ions. When potassium sulfate is added to this solution, which cation precipitates first? Hint, see table 18.2. talking about sulfate? <laughs> I, I forgot the, the question. Hang on. I'm going back. 
Somebody tell me what the question is. Potassium sulfate added to the solution. Okay, question. so we're adding sulfate. And um, so we were looking at lead two, which is this guy, and calcium, this guy, and barium. And barium. So a large KSP means that more of this dissolves, right? It's more soluble. And a small KSP means it's less soluble. These all have the same stoichiometry. The precipitate is going to be one to one for each of these, so we can compare KSPs. So barium sulfate has the smallest KSP. So that will precipitate first. So it's possible to add sulfate ion to this mixture and get the barium to precipitate while not getting any of the calcium or lead. Oh. Yeah, oh. see I was afraid of that. As I was scrolling backwards I like, I think maybe I put the table in there so I wouldn't have to do that. There it is. <laughs> should make notes to myself. So barium sulfate, calcium sulfate, and lead sulfate. Does that make sense? Um, the magnesium and calcium ions present in a solution, gives the molarities, can be separated by selective precipitation with potassium hydroxide. What minimum hydroxide ion concentration triggers the precipitation of the magnesium ion? So we're interested in the precipitation of the magnesium, and we can see by looking at these KSPs. Again, these are both, this is a one to two ratio and a one to two ratio. This KSP is much smaller, so that one's going to precipitate first. So we can calculate the concentration at equilibrium for that. And you go anything above that, and you're going to get precipitation. Come on. So magnesium hydroxide. Yeah, magnesium ion and two hydroxide ions. You know, again, here I skipped the uh, state symbols, but that two is important here, and uh, writing it out like this, you're much more likely to recognize that there's a two there. So um, we're going to look at the situation where Q is equal to KSP. Um, so. What is the initial concentration of magnesium ion? It's given right here, 0 0.025. And what's the initial concentration of hydroxide? Zero, right? We're going to add some. So, um, this is going to change by plus s and plus 2s. So I'm going to get 0 0.025 plus s and 2s. KSP is the magnesium and hydroxide squared. So this is another one where we could use um, S is small, right? Let's say that this is small enough that it doesn't matter. 
So then um, finding S we're going to get the square root of 2.06 times 10 to the minus 13 divided by 0 0.025 and the number 4 that the answer? No. No. It's really close to the answer. We calculated the value of S, um, but we want the hyd hydro hydroxide ion concentration. So the hydroxide ion concentration in this situation where it's just on the edge of precipitating is 2S. So hydroxide ion concentration equals 2s or 2 times 2.06 times 10 to the minus 13 should be 4.12 times 10 to the minus 13. I'm dumb. Oh. <laughs> dumb. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that is, is just wrong. <laughs> okay, so just you know, a lesson there. <clears throat> so I did something stupid, right? Does that make me stupid? No, no. no of course not. Everybody does stupid stuff. <laughs> Right? And just like own it and be okay with it. It doesn't mean you're stupid. Okay, so I used the wrong number. We want this number. Yeah. I'm not stupid <laughs> yet. <laughs> well, thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> Point eight seven times ten to the minus six mole. Okay. Yeah. So before when we use the excess wall, you said if we don't use it, it would still be correct. But in this case, it's something significantly different. So is the only way to get away doing excess mole? Well, did you do? Did you use a solver to do this one? No, it's just, it's just a question because you were you had put that before you did uh, at this small. It was like two point oh six times ten to the negative thirteen. Okay, but that's that's K that's KSP. Oh. Okay. And we're gonna solve for S. Yeah. No, that's okay. That's okay. How many letters? Yeah, there's a lot of letters. And S's can easily look like fives. That's where I put like little serifs on my capital S because I got mistaken for a five too many times. Um, just like with X is small, um, the 5% rule would apply. Um, is this less than 5% of 0.025? See, doesn't that look like an S? Zero, zero, five, seven percent. When we're looking at these, it will almost always be true that S is small. Any other questions? Okay, finding the concentrations of ions left in solution 
after selective ion precipitation. Okay, the solution is 0.085 molar in lead 2, 0.025 molar in silver. If selective precipitation is to be achieved using sodium chloride, what minimum concentration of sodium chloride do you need to begin to precipitate the ion that precipitates first? And then the second question, what is the concentration of each ion left in the solution at the point where the second ion begins to precipitate? Well, what's gonna precipitate first, do you think? Lead to chloride or silver chloride? Silver chloride. This is a lot smaller. So even though this is one to one and one to two, this would be my guess. So we'll look at silver chloride. Silver ions, chloride ions. Initial concentration of silver ions is 0.025 molar. Um, calcium, I'm sorry, chloride is zero. This will increase by plus whatever the solubility is, and this will increase by plus whatever the solubility is. So we'll get 0.025 plus S, and we'll get S. So KSP is equal to silver ion concentration times the chloride ion concentration. For silver chloride, we have 1.77 times 10 to the minus 10, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.025 plus S times S. So let's try S is small. Then S will be 1.77 times 10 to the minus 10 divided by 0 0.025. Seven point zero eight times ten to the minus nine molar. So that is pretty small compared to 0 0.025. I don't think we need to check that one. What does that equal? That's S, right? S is the chloride ion concentration where the silver starts to precipitate. So what minimum concentration of sodium chloride do you need to precipitate the first ion? That would be this number right here. So that's the answer to A. Now we need to look at the other ion. So the other ion is um, lead. Initial concentration of lead is 0 0.085. We want to find um, the concentration of chloride when this one starts to precipitate. So we're going to do the same calculation. Right, just slightly different numbers. So this will be plus S, and this will be plus 2S. Um, so KSP there, 1.17. 10 to the minus 5, that's going to equal 0 0.085 
plus s times 2s squared. Again, let's try it. Um, S is small. Then S is going to be equal to 1.17 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 0 0.085 divided by 4. Oops. Square root of that. Six, six times ten to the minus three. Okay, so this is um, related to the chloride concentration when the lead starts to precipitate. So what is the chloride concentration when the lead starts to precipitate? Two times it's two that. times that. So how are we going to figure out the concentration of silver and of lead 2 that are left at this point? So um, the lead started out at 0.085. And as the lead chloride, um, in order for this to precipitate, the chloride ion concentration has to be this, and the lead concentration has to be 0 0.085 plus this, which is going to be negligible, negligible difference, right? I'm running out of colors. It's toxic, so it's black. <laughs> Zero eight five plus S. something wrong here because does this make sense that this can be higher than it was originally no that doesn't make any sense at all so what did I do that was wrong I was calculating um, from from KSP um, that if we had I was doing a common ion calculation here um, for this answer, it doesn't make any difference. What I did wrong is I had the plus S here. There shouldn't be a plus S there. Because there's no solid silver chloride dissolving, so there cannot be any increase, right? So we want to get rid of that, because that's... Just... What this calculation doesn't tell us is how much sodium chloride has to be added to the solution. That's a little more involved. This is just, what does the chloride ion concentration in the solution need to be when these things start precipitating? Any questions?
Yay.